Okay, Josh, you may begin. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joshua Muehlberg, and today I'm going to be presenting you to you a quasi-experiment in the field of education. Before we jump into the whole presentation, I'll just like to take a moment to look at a brief table of contents. So for, as for the beginning elements, we're going to be looking at things like the research question and the MPA. After this is going to be the whole results section, which includes all my graphs and raw data. Next will be the analysis section, which is analyzing all of this raw data and kind of drawing conclusions. Lastly is the ending section, and that's going to be things such as limitations, delimitations, and the conclusion section. Let's begin. So at the beginning of the year, I've found that there's a problem in education in that through some preliminary observation and research, I found that the needs of visual, auditory, and tactile learners are not consistently being met in the general education classroom. So perhaps with a study that looks to combine re research in this field could provide better results for these students. With this problem, I had to ask myself a question for research. This question is, how can research models of instruction validate improvement for visual, tactile, and auditory learners aged 14 to 18 in a general education populace based on the Illinois state standards? With this question, I have to have a hypothesis or what I think is going to happen in the study. And that is, with this plan that I'm aiming to build, learning can be more effective for all these students of these learning styles and that this lesson would yield a high percentage of improvement compared to our standard lesson plan. So before we jump into more of the elements, I just wanted to address why is this even important? So as for the world of education, this could possibly generally improve the education, not only in the school, but having these findings being published perhaps could add to a wide network of research that could ultimately help the future researcher. Also, the teacher could look at these observations I'm going to do to improve her teaching. As for a personal stake, I'm in a high school populace. I'm 14 to 18, so this could directly affect me. And secondly, I want to have a career in teaching, so this highly interests me. Moving on with the importance idea, why even learning styles? So I was, this past summer, I was a tutor at summer school for a local elementary school. And I was tutoring one day and I noticed that some students just weren't learning almost. They're confused. So what I did um, on this day was I talked to my mother who was a preschool teacher. And this is when I was introduced to learning styles. And I was very, very interested in this kind of learning style idea. So this is why I decided to research learning styles. So moving on to the MPA section. So firstly, it's been found that learning styles can increase or decrease students' academic performances. This is from Chetty. Um, and one idea that can kind of add to this lesson plan is that providing visual examples improves learning in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics atmosphere, or STEM. Next, to pr just provide another perspective before we move on, one author um, called Newton in 2015 argued that learning styles don't even work. But the current research in the area is full of these papers which do advocate their use, which directly disagrees with the previous source. So moving on for what Rogowski says, they argue that one effective strategy for one learning style is to say visual learners, not the best for another learning style, say tactile. If I'm a visual learner, I'm not going to have to, you know, feel all these things to learn the best. Moving on to a source about PowerPoints, this kind of adds to the idea. The claim in this paper, the claim that PowerPoint enhanced teaching has no effect on Iranian intermediate English as foreign language, foreign language learners listening comprehension ability was rejected. So this means that essentially the PowerPoints were useful. Moving on to, in, to introducing student lives and personal connections and lessons plans. 
So this research found that certain support um, can be leveraged in the lesson plan. Kind of furthering the idea, they were going on to saying, or I, explaining how teaching children how to approach math in like a way that's their own style. So say, maybe someone has two sisters. Well, say your two sisters takes two apples away from 10. How many do you have? Things like that improve learning. So this is kind of another idea for this learning or this lesson plan. So lastly, what the literature review concludes is that there's literature both supporting and not supporting the learning styles theory. There's literature suggesting different methods for improving learning. Um, and these could work because they did work in other educational environments and geographic areas. So what this means is that it's possible for all these ideas that I found in the literature review to be combined into a singular lesson plan. So according to uh, Turner, you can in include parts of the lesson that touch on the student's personal lives. Um, the two authors suggesting that you provide tons of visuals and another author suggesting for auditory instruction in the classroom. So this was kind of the idea for the lesson plan was to add these things to a normal lesson plan. So now that there's all this research, there's still a gap. And that gap is, there is research covering why learning styles work, why they don't work, and all these methods used to teach the different subjects. However, there's no research concerning making a lesson plan that kind of caters to all these visual, auditory, tactile learners. Therefore, there's a gap in the research. Moving on to the definitions, just so things are a little bit clearer. First definition is general education, and that is just a general class that can uh, increase or develop students' um, just liter literacy skills, um, just basic comp competencies, things like that. So this would be like a base level class under something, say, like honors or AP. Next are the learning styles. So according to visual, auditory, or kinesthetic, which is kind of like tactile learning, so they can be used interchangeably. So there's a theory about that. So I included this in my research. So firstly, we have visual learning. So this would mean that students would prefer to learn seeing things visually, say a chart, maybe images, something like that. Next is an auditory learning. So that would be learning through hearing things or and lastly, we have a tactile learner. So this would be someone who just likes to physically feel something in order to learn best. Moving on to the research plan. So this is, this is a quasi-experimental study. So what that is, is a study that has, it's testing a target group um, and a not target group to see the results. And I will go into that in a little bit. So the first part of the plan is to send a learning style survey. So this survey is validated from administrators at my school. I did have their permission to use and edit it for my purposes. The next part of the plan is to observe two classes for three days. So this class is approximately 30 students under the same teacher, and this is an algebra two classroom, general education. Next is to observe these, th these two classes for three more days but this is where the uh, solution comes in, and that is this lesson plan, with one, one class having the solution, one class not having the other. And lastly, the final survey unit test. Moving on to the method and subjects. So again, this is a quasi-experiment, and the populace, again, is a general education algebra two class. So kind of more MPA elements here, so the quasi experiment works because I'm taking these two groups or these two classes and I'm picking one as a treatment group and I'm seeing what happens to both groups with this kind of new lesson plan being on one of them. Originally, I wanted to do a meta analysis, but this did not work because it only combines ideas and there's not really an experiment. So moving on to the results. So first is the learning style survey. So as we can see here, 
about half of the students that responded, which is nine students, are auditory learners, a third are visual learners, and about 10% are, or one tenth are tactile learners. Next, on the final survey, I asked overall, how satisfied are you with your Algebra 2 class? These are all the answers. Um, I will explain this data in a moment in the analysis section. Next, I asked, what category is your teacher most skilled in? The most responses had said student relationships with 30%. Again, I'll explain this in the analysis. The last question was, what category is your teacher the least skilled in? And this had 40% of students saying that the presentation of lesson was what the teacher was least skilled in. Lastly, something I did not mention and that I'll, I will explain in a little bit is the phone usage data. So there was kind of a, a limitation in this research which led me to look at kind of more phone usage and kind of overall engagement in the classroom. So this is why I have this data. The teacher performance, so I was doing an observation, so I just kind of categorized the, day, the days and the um, category that the teacher was in. So if the teacher was sufficient, that'll be a Y for yes. And if the teacher is not sufficient, that'll be an N for no. So over here are the totals for the singular area. And on the bottom here are the single days. Now you will notice that there's only five days instead of six. And I will mention that in a little bit in the limitation section. So moving on, here's day, uh, period A. So going on to the analysis. So there was an average score of five out of seven for class satisfaction. So this means that students are relatively satisfied with their, uh, their teach or the class, excuse me. Um, the observation found that the teacher was highly sufficient in student relationships and the students also agreed with that in the survey. So this means that overall the teacher is skilled in student rapport. Next, 40% of students think that the teacher is least skilled in presenting information to their students. And the two charts show differently and that she was sufficient. So these have like a negative correlation. Um, so it's kind of inconclusive here. Mm -hmm. Lastly, there's a high amount of student phone usage in class for both class periods. Moving on to the ending elements, so first with the limitations. So first, the students may not answer, answer truthfully on the survey, they may just skip through it. Some students may not be interested in learning in the class or they may not try. Not all students were in class every day, so that could affect phone usage, things like that. Um, so the phone usage data may be inaccurate because I'm not able to see everything uh, all the time. And here's kind of where I go into, oh, I'm like, gonna explain this later. So. Here it is. The teacher was gone for the last two days of the data collection period, which is why there's only five days instead of six. Furthermore, the bell ringer data is incomplete. Um, I will explain that in a moment. And the two surveys that I, were, I mentioned before were sent after the observation period, again, because of the teacher. So I, now for explaining like the bell ringer data, so, the teacher, after many attempts to reach out to the teacher to get this data, I never got the data. So I'm unable to share it with you all. So moving on to the delimitations. This was the rule of the administration over the teacher. So the original research project could not be carried out. Um, and the reason for this is because the administration told the teacher to spend less time at the board opposed to my literature review, which suggested that the teacher should do more time at the board. So ultimately, because the administration does have the final say, I could not implement this research fully. Moving on to the implications, so the teacher may be able to improve her teaching and see these kind of issues in the class. The world of education has a new, even though it may be small, understanding of students, and the teacher is now able to cater more to her student needs. So moving on to the conclusion and new understanding. So overall, the teaching method has likely no effect on the student engagement. Um, the students do have a high propensity to use their phones during class, no matter what the lesson is. Most students in the scope of this research are 
auditory learners, again, about 55%. Students are relatively satisfied with their class. This is validated by the final survey, with average score five out of seven. And this, the teacher is skilled in student rapport. So to revisit the research question really fast, because of this missing test data, we are unable to see which exact learning style improved the most and least. However, this opens the area for the next researcher to explore. Finally, the data presented refutes uh, my original hypothesis um, that this ultimate lesson plan can improve learning because from what was found, there was no really major improvement in student learning. So, so there's a little bit of inconclusion here. And here's my work cited and slide credits. And that is it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> What was one obstacle or challenge that you encountered while implementing your research method and how did you address it? So one, ob one obstacle that I've encountered while um, kind of going with my research method was definitely the rule of the administration over the teacher. Again, this was that she should spend less time at the board. How I overcame this was not giving up. It was very difficult. But how I overcame this was I kind of just moved with it and did what I can, which one of those things would be adding the phone usage. So I'd say just keep, keep going and adding different areas into it kept, um, is what I did to keep moving forward. All right, thank you. Which of the various perspectives you explored was the most difficult for you to incorporate into your research inquiry and why? Can you repeat that? Sure. Which of the various perspectives you explored was the most difficult for you to incorporate into your research inquiry and why? I would say the most difficult perspective to include in my research was what Newton was saying about how learning styles don't work and how the literature is just full of you know, papers that um, support this. And this was hard because I was so focused on, yes, learning styles do work, Yes, we need to improve them. And this kind of put me off a little, and I knew I had to include it, so I would say definitely that one because it was just completely disagreeing with what I was um, presenting. Excellent. If you had three more months to work on this research question, what additional research strategies would you put into practice? I will say if I had three more months to further this research, one strategy that I would implement is um, I would say I would put uh, some sort of analysis or maybe more discussion on this topic because it, my research was a bit inconclusive because of all the limitations. So I would say either working around this with the time I have or perhaps doing research at another school, which I would now have the time for because of these three months. Okay. Excellent. Well done, Josh. Very well done.